Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making an old-fashioned chocolate cobbler. Now this is a really old recipe. It's really simple and you probably have all the ingredients in your cabinet already. So it's not something you're gonna have to go shopping for. It's a pretty good pantry recipe because just about everything in it you can take right out of your pantry. Um, even the milk, if you, know, if you don't have fresh milk, you can use powdered milk or um, evaporated milk in this recipe. But today I'm using whole milk because I got it. But if, you know, times continue to get worse, you can do this completely out of your pantry. Now let's kind of go over the ingredients. I have a cup of self-rising flour. I have a half a cup of sugar, three tablespoons of oil, two tablespoons of cocoa, and a half a cup of milk. And over here, I have a cup of brown sugar and a quarter of a cup of cocoa, and I have one and three quarter cups of water that I'm gonna put in the microwave and warm up. You do want your water hot. Um, I like filtered water, so I get this out of the refrigerator and then heat it in the microwave. You can use hot tap water though, if you want. Now, what we're, the way that we mix this is as important as the ingredients. And you have to layer this like any other cobbler. If you don't have self-rising flour, you can certainly use all purpose and add uh, one and one half tablespoons of baking powder and oh about a quarter teaspoon of salt to it but I'm gonna add two tablespoons of my cocoa to my flour and I'm also gonna add my half a cup of white sugar now if you don't have brown sugar or you don't have regular granulated white sugar you can use brown sugar in this part and you can use white sugar in this part but if you have it, this combination works best. And I'm gonna stir that up. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna mix my cocoa and my flour and my sugar kinda in together. And it'll make that a little easier to mix um, once we add our wet ingredients. All right. Now, I'm gonna add my three tablespoons of oil and my half a cup of milk. And I'm going to mix this up. Okay. Now we need either a, like an eight by eight or nine by nine pan. The little um, six by 10 pans, I think it is. It's kind of like a little biscuit pan. They'll work for this too. You want to spray it or grease it. And we're going to dump our batter portion of our cobbler in here. And that's all there is to it. There's no eggs in this recipe. So this is a good one for folks with egg allergies. And you could substitute some other kind of milk um, for a vegan or vegetarian recipe. You could do oat milk or almond milk or just about anything, I suppose. I mean, it's not that important in the recipe. Okay. Now, we are not gonna mix this again. As we add layers, we're just gonna add them. I'm going to put my half a cup of, or I'm sorry, my quarter cup of cocoa in my cup of brown sugar. And lots of folks ask, is it light brown sugar or dark brown sugar? And it doesn't matter, whatever you got. And like I said, if you don't have brown sugar, you can use regular granulated sugar like we put in our batter. And you do want to mix this up a little bit. You want to get that cocoa kind of even in your brown sugar there. You don't have to get all the lumps out of your brown sugar, though. Um, they'll dissolve in as it bakes. 
I mean, I try not to let any huge lumps get in it, but even if a great big one got in there, it wouldn't hurt a thing. You want to preheat your oven to 350 and get that warming up while you're mixing this up. And you can see I've got some pretty big lumps of brown sugar in there. You can take your time and bust those up as much as you want to or just like I said not worry about them but you do want the cocoa kind of distributed in the sugar and that's a cup of packed brown sugar so but it doesn't matter light or dark and you dump that over top of your batter and kind of spread it out a little bit that's a big lump right there we'll bust it up a tad okay now we're going to get our hot water out of the microwave And you're just going to pour that hot water over top of your brown sugar and cocoa and your batter. Do not mix this. If you mix it, it won't come out right. So I hope folks don't just look at the ingredients and then try to make it. And now you want to put it in your preheated 350 degree oven for, depending on your oven, 40, 45 minutes, you want the batter part will be done and it'll kind of spring back and it should have like a chocolate syrup bubbling up through the batter. So let's put this in the oven. Okay, while we're giving this just a minute to finish cooking and I've got one that's just about ready to come out of the oven, I want to share Proverbs 31 with you or part of it because this is our Mother's Day video and I really wish I had committed this to memory, but my memory is not what it was when I was 30, and I don't want to mess this up. So from Proverbs 31, starting at verse 25, Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Mamas and grannies, I know how tough times are. But this Proverbs 31 woman that the Bible talks about and that God praises, she shall rejoice in the time to come and she will take care of her household. Because the woman that fears the Lord, she will be praised. And if you trust God and you fear Him, and you keep his commandments and you let him guide you through this no matter what the circumstances are in the world and no matter how tough times get or how tight things are God is going to take care of you in your household and you will rejoice in time to come and he will prosper you because his word says that he works all things for the good of them that love him and are called by his name so you keep trusting the Lord and don't worry about what's going on in the world. He's in control and he will take care of you and your household as long as you do. And I want to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. And if your home is fortunate enough to be blessed with a Proverbs 31 woman, you make sure you honor her this Mother's Day and you praise her and you let her know how much you appreciate her because that mother is not going to be there for forever. Now let's see what this chocolate cobbler looks like and make one for your mama this Mother's Day because it would be absolutely perfect for a cookout or a brunch dessert or just about any time or any kind of gathering that you have planned for her this year. 
Ooh, my goodness. You would not believe how good this smells. Now, I don't know if you could see that on camera or not, but the top is solid, and it's a little bit um, wiggly because underneath it, we've got all that liquid that we poured in. And I've got just a little bit of bubbling coming through. Sometimes you get a whole lot, and sometimes you just get a little bit. But you can see where it's like browned all up here on top. Now, you do want to let this cool for just a few minutes before you scoop it out. And like I said, there's going to be a nice layer underneath of like a chocolate syrup. And this is really good with just a, well, it's good by itself, but it's good with a scoop of vanilla ice cream on the side, especially if you're doing a cookout. If you were going to do it for a Mother's Day brunch or something like that, um, you might want to serve it with some strawberries and whipped cream which would be just beautiful and it would be good for you know mother's day any any kind of cookout this maybe is one of those desserts that you can use all through this well all through this year because it is a pantry friendly recipe and you can use any kind of milk in it it doesn't matter um, if you don't have the self-rising flour certainly you can add the baking powder and the salt to it um, but it's not something that you're going to have to go out and buy hundred dollars worth of ingredients to make it's simple and that's the kind of recipes those simple old recipes that our grandmas and our mothers used for generations that are going to get us through this mess you can pull this stuff out and just make it i do want to wish y'all a happy mother's day i hope you try this this year especially for your mom because everybody loves chocolate and the warm cobbler with the vanilla ice cream, there just ain't nothing much better. Or like I said, some strawberries and whipped cream. Either way, it's delicious. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.